Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. This is Coach John Hall. He is an amazing individual. He works with entrepreneurs and CEO, and he has a specialty where he focuses on breath work, helping people reduce stress. He has a lot to offer, and he also, a lot of the techniques that he, he explains and he teaches can not only be used with entrepreneurs and CEO, but it can be used for everybody because he has a lot of great tools, techniques, and strategies that could be very helpful for everyone in society. So I just want you to listen to him, what he has to say. You're going to be really amazed because his ways of doing things and his thoughts and his programs are just uh, truly amazing. So John, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, Stacy. Well, first off, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Um, I know we've just been having tremendous chats leading up to this. Yeah. And, uh, can't wait to uh, share all this with your audience as well. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And um, no, I, I really appreciate that. You know, I um, started, I was a tech, technology executive for 30 years. Uh, I'm still very, very tech fluent. And, uh, you know, that, that's just kind of how my brain is wired. Yeah. Uh, but after my 25 year marriage uh, imploded, when my kids went to college, I started down a path of what the heck happened how do I make sure this never happens again? What do I need to do to be able to shift and um, learn from this and, and, and embrace the lessons from it as painful as they may be? Yeah. And that journey started me into a personal development journey that uh, then when I met my wife, who you had the, the privilege of inter interviewing, Sandy yeah. Sandler, mm -hmm. and um, we met and started a coaching business together. And that started me down the road of really not just looking at some additional techniques like embodiment and this somatic work, the breath work, but also really understanding the science behind it, because that's just how my mind is, is wired is uh, technically. And so I wanted to understand not just, Oh, Hey, this works, but why does it work? And yeah. how can I best adapt it to my clients' lives? Right. I think it's so important. Like we had mentioned, like we were talking before and we had mentioned how the brain has over 6,000 thoughts a day, which just blows my mind. And then, you know, someone was mentioning also that came on the show that we take 20,000 breaths a day. So that's pretty amazing. You, we take 20,000 breaths a day and we have over 6,000 thoughts that flow through our mind each day. And imagine, you know, depending on the person you are, what happens if all those thoughts aren't positive? What happens if they're, all, you know, a lot of them are negative? Or how do we keep a positive flow so we can keep a nice, calm, productive life and keep that stress level to a point where it's a healthy stress level and it's not going to open us up to any problems because as you know 70 percent of illnesses is caused by stress and when you have stress in your life you can't focus you're you're focusing on the wrong things your clarity is off it just it, it, it hits everything it just it could destroy you just like diabetes so like how do you keep a, a positive you know help helpful and and a really good light through working on different techniques for lowering your stress and trying to cope with the daily stresses of life because life could be very gruesome you know it's like a roller coaster ride for some people so how, how do you do it like what are some suggestions oh absolutely I, I love the topics you introduced here too because there's just so much to uh to, to start to uh to discuss here together you know, the first thing that I really want to touch on, and I loved you brought up the, the the thoughts, the number of thoughts we have every day and the percentage of those that are negative, right? For most of us, those are negative, self-judging, harsh, critical thoughts, right? It is just, it is part of what the brain seems to do is it's got uh, the, the itty bitty committee, right? There's a few names for that, but the one that's yeah. always judging us, the self-judgment that's, that's telling us we're not enough, we can't accomplish it, or we should be working harder, right? All the shoulds, yes. right? Well, the expression that we should all over ourselves, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's our mind running this way. And a lot of what I found as I did the research on this is we have a body-mind connection that we really were, in the West especially, we've been taught that we're very logical creatures and we, you know, we've been trained to use our mind. Most of our training, especially at the university level, but even in, in grade school and up, 
we're trained how to use our mind. We're very much trained on this is how to sharpen your mind. This is how to use your mind to the point that that sitting has become a new disease, yeah. right? Because we sit so long and we just engage our mind. We don't engage the rest of our body. Yeah. And what started to be uh, explored and been explained recently, especially with the use of new technology like MRIs, mm -hmm. is the mind-body connection. So what do I mean by that? Um, we think a lot of times that our thoughts influence our body, right? That if I, if I can tell myself to be happy, I can tell myself to not be sad anymore. Yeah. I can tell myself to not be stressed. Mm -hmm. But what's really happening is our body is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. So as much as we get into a situation, let's say a stressful situation, our life is busy, we're getting into stress, right. we're getting into a type of distress, which is the, the, the um, unhealthy type of stress, right? As right. opposed to healthy stress. So we're getting into the unhealthy stress. And what we're doing is we start telling ourselves that, well, I shouldn't be stressed over this. I shouldn't be bothered by this. I should be calm. Yeah. And we, and our mind likes to say, okay, well, well, let's just calm down. Just take a breath. John, calm down, calm down. No need to stress about this. Don't panic. You don't need to explode. You don't need to say that comment. Boom, what happens? All of a sudden we're down the road and we're doubly guilty now because not only are we getting stressed, we're judging ourselves for getting stressed. Right. So what I what I found as I went into this research is first off, if we understand the reason why our body has a natural stress response, which is absolutely there to keep us alive, right? Yeah. Imagine walking down the woods, you're walking through the woods, all of a sudden there's a grizzly bear that pops up in front of you, right? If you were to do the best case scenario, what do you want? I want my body primed to get away from that grizzly bear, yeah. right? I want, I want all of my energy in my body to go towards my, uh, my muscles being able to escape. Yeah. I'm going to shut down any systems that don't need energy, like my digestive system. I'm going to shut down uh, my sexual system, get shut down. Digestion gets shut, shut down. My breath becomes more shallow. My muscles become more activated. My blood is pumping. I have cortisol, nadephrine. Um, I've got, uh, uh, oh gosh, my mind's drawing a blank right now, but I've got all the hormones that are pumped into my body. Yeah. And what's happening now is my body's priming to run away, to get out of there. Right. Right. And that happens in, in normal day-to-day -day life where we get into a tight deadline or we get into a stressful uh, social situation, right? Right. These can trigger the same stress response that our body is gearing up for a fight or flight response. Yes. And if we don't know how to redirect that, we'll just kind of get swept away. Yeah. Right. So when we do the research, when we look at what's happening, we have a part of our mind called the brain called the amygdala, which is mm -hmm. the, kind of sitting right at the top of the neck, uh, at the, at the base of the head. And what happens is that system is hijacking our brain essentially. Yeah. And it's hijacking our higher level thinking, our prefrontal cortex, and the amygdala is taking over to ensure we're safe, to ensure, ensure we have a chance of survival. Right. And so if we're just telling ourselves calm down, calm down. The amygdala is listening to the body saying, I'm not safe. I'm not safe. I'm not safe. I can't let go. Right. But breath is one of these cool features of we can consciously control our breath, take it out of the unconscious into conscious control. We can breathe in a certain way that signals to our body that it's safe. Right. Our body relaxes signals to our brain that we're safe. Right. The amygdala releases the hijack and we can start to think more rationally about the situation. Yes. So that breath I found is really the key first step to starting to release the hijack when we get into a stress situation and understanding the stress response itself isn't bad. It's just that that stress response isn't needed at that particular moment. Right. Now, is there a certain way that you're supposed to breathe like if you're let's say that bear is about attack or you're in a si situation where it has to be done now and you're starting to get that panic mode and, and you're starting to feel all that stress starting to build up in your body is there a specific way of breathing that is most effective because there's many different ways you can breathe but are there specific ways to slow down your breath is there specific ways to breathe in the oxygen and breathe out the oxygen that is better than other ways that will have a much better effect. Yeah, absolutely. So 
So first off, during the bear attack, get out of the bear attack. I'm not going <laughs> I've got to I've got to do the attack for the bear breath. Okay, so your breath is just get out of that situation. But let's talk about when you're out of the stressful situation. Yeah. Um, or you want to redirect that stressful situation that you're in. So you're right. not attacked by the bear, but your boss just came by and told you, hey, this this deadline is due on Monday. It's Friday at four o'clock. And they neglected to tell you about it until that moment. Right. right. So let's talk about that response, which is where mm -hmm. we go into a rational thinking. Yes. Right. The stress response takes over and we can stay stuck in this mood. We can stay stuck and not see things clearly. Right. So. What we really want to do is we want to activate, there's something called the vagus nerve and yes. based on the Latin, right? Which is where the word vagrant comes yes. from, like wanderer. It means the wanderer and the vagus nerve wanders throughout our body. It connects a number of different systems into our brain. Yes. And it is one of the largest key inputs from our body into our brain. That's the vagus nerve. Yes. So two key things that we want to be able to do to signal to the vagus nerve that we're safe. Number one is we want to shift from a chest breath to a belly breath. Okay. We're born actually breathing from our belly, but we learn and we move it up to our chest over time. Okay. And our chest breathing just becomes the go-to. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some positive aspects of chest breathing, but it is not, it is, it is more of an activation to our body. Yes. The belly breath. I okay. See. So if you want to try the difference, you can put your hand on your chest, put your hand on your belly. Okay. Just take a natural breath in just without thinking about it and see which hand moves the most. If your chest moved more, if your chest hand moved more than your belly, then you're more chest breathing. If your belly hand moved more than your chest, you're belly breathing. I felt my chest moving a little bit more. Okay. So now just kind of go keep, keep your hands in the same position and just okay. focus on letting that belly hand move out as you inhale and exhale. Much more relaxing. That's right. That's right. That's exactly it. Yeah. So there's a number of things that are going on, um, both physiologically. <clears throat> what we did is we allowed our lungs to take a deeper expansion. Mm -hmm. Because instead of having to fight our rib cage to get that breath, yes. we're allowing our belly, which is very easy to expand, we're allowing all those organs to move out of the way and displace to make room for our lungs to expand. Okay. So we're 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 working with our body to allow a deeper breath. Mm -hmm. And we're also, by the way, I had my gall, I had gallstones and had to have emergency gallbladder surgery in my late 30s. Oh wow. And it, because I didn't know this. My my breath was so shallow, I wasn't getting the movement in my abdomen that I needed. Oh, so there's wow. it's a health benefits from belly breathing as well, because you're constantly moving and massaging all those organs down there. Okay. So the deep breathing, when you do that deeper breath, when you aren't having to fight your rib cage, but you're letting your, your belly expand and you're allowing that deeper breath to occur, that is immediately signaling your body to relax. All right. Now we're going to double down on that. So go back to putting your hand on your belly and you're going to okay. focus on getting your belly to move out. And this time you're going to inhale through your nose for the count of three okay. and you're going to exhale out of your mouth for a count of five. So let's go ahead and do that one. That feels very relaxing. Very relaxing. Yeah. So what we did is we combined two things on that one. We did the belly breath, which is already bigger breath, deeper breath, signaling your body to relax. Mm -hmm. But then we coupled it with and a longer exhale than an inhale. Okay. And that longer exhale also signals to our body to relax. So instead of our mind telling our body to calm down, yes, what we did is our mind told our breath to act in a certain way that our body interprets as I'm calm. So my voice is like popping here. I got a sore throat. So mm -hmm. I like that little high note I hit on that. Definition. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's, that is one of the breaths that we can use 
that is a very calming breath. So again, not during the bear attack, but after yeah. the bear attack, when you're safely out of danger, <laughs> you're noticing you're noticing the stress response, you're noticing the stress is starting to build, you're feeling the hijack. Those would be, that would be the breath I would do right there. A deep belly breath with an inhale, uh, sorry, an exhale that's longer than the inhale. Yeah, That's gonna give you your, your most, the most effect in signaling your body to calm down. That also seems like it would be great too, because you know, so many people suffer from a high cortisol level. Now, if we were to change our breathing and we were to consistently learn how to breathe in a more common sense to the body, we could actually improve our health. And like you said, you weren't getting enough oxygen in your abdomen area. And that's how you got your gallbladder, your, your, your um, gold, gold stones. And, and so it seems like not only can it help stress, but it, you know, it, well, 70% of case of stress is caused, you know, causes illness. So I guess if we start using breathing techniques that could actually lower the stress, which also in, in, in all really helps the body stay healthy and can even possibly promote longevity on your part. If we learn how to breathe properly and then also working on those, those positive thoughts and trying to let those negativity, those negative thoughts, you know, leave us, you know, because I, you know, it's, it's funny because a lot of times when we, when we look back at things, what do we remember? The first things we remember the negative things before we remember, we talk about the positive things. And it's like, it's, so it's really changing your mindset, changing your breathing could actually, those two things, your thoughts and your breathing could actually really change you completely as a person and probably make you more productive. Absolutely. In fact, that is, and you touched on exactly what I do to work with, uh, you know, people to, to coach them in this. So let's start with, a, you opened with the, the number of breaths we take each day. You shared a thought that uh, around 20,000 breaths each day. Mm -hmm. so imagine if, even if we just remember uh, a tenth of them, yeah. imagine 2,000 times a day, we're signaling to our body, we're calm, we're clear, we're grounded, we're connected. Yeah. Imagine having a little coach sitting next to you 2,000 times a day going, hey, Stacy, you're calm. It's all good, right? Yeah. So it, I mean, you see the impact of that breath and it just took a few seconds. So as we begin to incorporate this, mm -hmm. Which is, which is one of the ways that I work with clients. So let, let's talk about those really quickly. And the first thing I do is I work with clients, clients tactically. Yeah. So I work with them to understand how a stress system, how, what a stress response is, why the, why we have it and the healthy part of it, but also how to redirect that stress response. So you're noticing you're in a stressful situation. How do we redirect that? How do you get calm again? Right. How do you regain control? Right. The second way is strategically. So I work with clients on specific breath patterns and regular practices that expand what's called our window of tolerance. Mm -hmm. So our window of tolerance is the zone of chaos or uncertainty or stress that we can handle without going into a stress response, without going into a hyper arousal, which is fight or flight, yes. or hypo arousal, which is withdrawal, shutdown, depression. Right. So we start expanding that window of tolerance. And by the way, this is something that the Navy SEALs do. This is something that top athletes do. This is something that the FBI does is wow. they work with their, right? The Navy SEALs go through something in the US, they go through something incredibly intense called Hell Week. And if they aren't mentally prepared to deal with that, if they let their body's stress response run out of control, yeah, what's going to happen? They aren't going to make it. It's one of the, it's a, it has a tremendously high dropout rate. Yeah. So this is part of what they're learning is how to breathe in order to be able to make it through that successfully. So tactically, how do you redirect the stress response? Strategically, how do you expand your window of tolerance to be able to hand, handle more chaos? Yeah. Right? Because I'm working with executives and entrepreneurs. Maybe they have their own startup or their own company. You know, how many times in your life when you own your company, do things just go sideways? Right. right? All of a sudden you're trying to sort out. And what do you need? You need your clearest thinking at that moment. Yeah. More that you can stay outside of a stress response, even though a situation may be stressful. Right. The more that you can, you can line up with your goals and achieve them. 
And then the third way I work with, with clients is I work to shift limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So, right. We were talking a little bit pre-show about how, you know, my, my image that I take is we get these little beliefs in childhood or we pick them up along our way. You know, I'm not enough. Uh, I can't, I can't surpass my father in business. Yeah. Or if I become successful, my friends won't like me um, or I'll be all alone uh, or people, people I love will leave me, right? All these thoughts, all these yeah. little beliefs picked up and we weren't, um, we didn't have the capacity as a child or at that time to evaluate them for what they were. And right. so we got them and we may wrap little like pearls. We may wrap something smooth around them to make them a little easier to digest. Yeah. But they sit there and they live inside of us. Right. So by using breath work and very specific imagery and patterns that have been proven to be very successful in reprogramming our subconscious mind or what uh, Daniel, Con Daniel Kahneman would call system one or system one thinking, yeah. uh, book thinking fast and slow, we can start to shift our go-to day-to-day system that and prevent these biases and fallacies from being a part, right? We can start to reduce and address some of the biases and fallacies and limiting beliefs that live in that system. Right. right. So now we're we're living more in line with how we're meant to live. Right. You know, there was an interesting fact that you you had mentioned, which is so true early on. You were saying how a lot of people um, you know, they get so stressed because they think they they haven't accomplished what they could have accomplished and they they can't, you know, their their self-worth, they they down they downplay it and they don't feel that. I haven't, you know, I always wanted to be at this level. I'm not at this level. I haven't accomplished this. You know, I'm not worthy. I'm, you know, I didn't meet up to my expectations in life, you know, and they, they start to beat themselves up and their stress level goes higher and then their self, their self-worth goes lower. And then, you know, and then that plays a big role on how they get stressed because then they are focused on what they haven't accomplished, but maybe that journey wasn't meant to be in the first place, but in their head, they have this expectations of who they want to be, whether it's, whether it's, it's actually relevant, you know, well, not relevant, but if it's re realistic or not, you know, that's what they think in their heads. So those negative thoughts, how does someone start to erase those negative thoughts and start to get back on a, a level of reality and, and really start to accept themselves for who they are and really start to appreciate the person they've become? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's a great question. There's a lot there. So um, I, I'd love to, I'd love to start by sharing a story. Sure. So um, when I was uh, a few years ago, I have a, a, a nephew, he's older now, but my nephew was uh, nine or 10 at the moment. And I was staying with my brother and we were taking a walk out in the neighborhood. And um, we had been told by some neighbors, they had seen a rabid fox in the, in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and to be careful when we went out on our walk. Right. Well, my nephew had the flashlight. <laughs> so we're walking down the road and all my, all my nephew can think about is the rabid fox. So that, <laughs> that flashlight is just shooting all through the woods. I mean, it, <laughs> It's deep in the woods, it's in the ditch, it's up in the trees, it's sometimes it's <laughs> in front of us, but like that flashlight is going all over the place. Yeah. And it made it very difficult to walk because instead of focusing on the path in front of us, right, we're, we're having to guess what's <laughs> going on because it's just, it's so distracting. Right. The flashlight everywhere, right? Yeah. I like to use that analogy because when we start to develop mindfulness, which is our ability to refocus our mind. Yes. Right. People, people believe I used to believe meditation was focusing on nothing and it's not meditation is focusing on a single thing. It's, it's refocusing our mind back into a single point. Right. That of allowing it. So what we're doing is we're taking the flashlight out of the hands of the nine-year-old. Yeah. And we're getting it to one of the adults on the walk that'll keep it focused on the path, unless there's a real reason to take it off of it. Right. So, as we do what I found for myself and a lot of clients, instead of focusing on meditation as a single word or trying to clear their mind, when we can bring awareness to our breath, yeah, it is just such a natural gateway to allow us to then start training our mind to calm down and focus in. Right. And the more that we do it, this is part of my strategic training. The mm -hmm. more that we do that, the more our body knows how to respond. 
Right. So the point is we do this over time. A breath is not just signaling our body to, to relax. The same breath is also signaling our mind to refocus and come back online. Right. So I, I think that is really one of the first steps. And that's obviously why I train people in breath work because I think it's so powerful. Yeah. Recognizing these negative thoughts, recognizing it's just the mind chatter, being able to use our breath, use our physiology uh, to be able to refocus. And in fact, that's one of the acronyms that I teach clients is yeah. EPM, like beats per minute, like your heart rate. Yeah. I teach them when you start to feel your heart rate go up, BPM, breath work, right? Your breathe. Yes. Physiology, right? What's going on in our body? How are we breathing? Right? How, how are we showing up? A lot of times we do this when we get stressed, right? We yeah, punch yeah. Mm -hmm. shoulders collapse, the head goes down. So opening up our body, opening up our chest, by the way, uh, uh, Amy Cuddy has done some tremendous work around this showing the mindset changes in physiology. And the final one, then being our mindset. So then refocusing to a positive mindset. But I, I believe we have to do them in that order. Yeah. Because the breath leading to the physiology, leading to the mindset, we're just in our mind trying to fight yeah. our mind and our body at the same time. Right. And that's virtually impossible. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Bingo. I love that story though. And it, and it's, it's, it's a cute story and it's so true though. You know, like if you're walking on a path and, and you're so in fix, you know, fixated on one specific thing and you're looking all over the place for that one specific thing, you can't focus on, on the path and where you're going, you know, and it, it's so true. It's so true. Just like if you're going to climb up a tree, you're going to focus on the trunk. You're going to, and then they, you'll make your way to the branches, you know, but you're, you're, you're focused and you're, you're, you're fixated in one specific area. You're not all over the place or else you're going to fall off that tree, you know? Right. And, and it, it's, it's so true. So true. You know, I, I feel, I feel like really breath work is so powerful. It's such a powerful tool. And I don't think people realize how powerful it is. I think a lot of people let their mind take over and that's a problem. You know, I see that especially in, in business with people, when I speak to clients and I speak to people, they are so, if they're not making payroll or if they're not paying the bills or if they're having stress and, and something wrong goes and, and it throws the whole office off, you know, they're, they're, they're scattered all over the place and they're just fixated on the problem, but they're not fixated on the solution and their stress level goes up. So then they can't focus on, on really finding that solution because they're so, they're so, you know, they're fixated on, on the actual problem and their mind is going a mile a minute. All those thoughts that we're talking about, those 6,000 thoughts, it's, it's like a hurricane in their brain instead of like a, a flow and energy that we're supposed to have because as a human you know as an energy because our whole our, the whole world is made of energy if we didn't have energy it wouldn't be here and our bodies the same way we're just flowing you know and if a healthy person has a flow and energy no blockage it just flows and if you have stress in your life you're not flowing you're like a hurricane it's all over the place you know if you're going to get a cat scan or you're going to get you know an eg you're going to see you're going to start seeing things going all over the place you know it's just yeah you, you have to figure out ways to really get off the problem or get off the 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 things that aren't important and really focus on what's important you know and I, I think that, you know, a lot of the tools you mentioned are, are very useful and, and, and really getting yourself to that point, because once you calm yourself down, it seems like then you can really focus on the solution because now you're calm, you're clear, you're clear minded, you have clarity and you can focus, you know, yeah. instead of having that hurricane going on in your brain. You know, absolutely. In fact, um, Dr. John Gottman, who is a relational expert, but he's done a lot of research uh, into the physiology of couples and people in stressful situations. And let's face it, relational stress can be some of the biggest stress we have in our life. <laughs> More than anything, right? I, mean, I know that firsthand and we yeah. know it. You're in a relationship, you know, the stress that a relationship can bring oh, yeah. as well as the beautiful side of a relationship as well. Exactly. And he did research and he found that in a, in a stressful situation, when a person's heart rate goes over a hundred beats per minute, the blood flow to their prefrontal cortex, which is that wise executive 
let's stay in flow decision maker, right? It's the yeah. part to bring our energy in alignment. It goes offline and our amygdala takes over. Yeah. So we're literally stopping blood flow into this region of our brain, taking wow. that eye center offline, which again, I see a bear in the woods. I don't need to know the spiritual meaning of the bear about to attack me in the woods. <laughs> I know that I need to run, right? Uh -huh. So I don't need this part of my brain when yeah. I have an immediate threat and I need to get out of there. But I do need this part of my brain when I'm not physically in danger, right? When I, when I want to redirect the stress response, I want to give it a different reaction than I've given yeah. in the past. Right. That's absolutely the part of getting, again, the key part of getting that physiology, getting the blood flow back to this part of your brain yeah. so that you can make wise decisions. So true. Now, if you had to like take what we have said and you wanted to give some takeaways to the audience, how, what important things would you like to emphasize? Because we've gone over a lot of information today and there's a lot of things. But if you had to summarize, like what important things do you want to emphasize to the listeners that will make a huge difference in their lives? Absolutely. So the first thing that, that I really would love people to understand, and it's the reason I've been doing this uh, this podcast circuit and just bringing so much awareness to this, is your body's natural stress response is there for a reason. Don't beat yourself up. Don't judge yourself, right? Don't blame yourself for becoming stressed or anxious. Educate yourself on it. Learn how to redirect it, right? It is just, it is how our bodies are wired. Yeah. And there should be no, there is no need to have judgment around being stressed or being anxious and beating yourself up. That, right. That's number one. The second thing is, if you do want to redirect your natural stress response, again, the key is going to be that deep belly breath mm -hmm. with an exhale that's longer than an inhale, right? I really love inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Yes. A three, five count or a five, seven count. Those are great ones to do. Yeah. Um, but again, even just you just taking that belly breath without any other direction, you could feel the relaxation that came out of it. Yeah. And the third part is I would really encourage everybody to learn more about using breath work as a day-to-day -day practice to be able to handle more chaos, handle more adversity, handle more stress, start shifting limiting beliefs. Um, you know, I put a course together that addresses it, uh, which which I, I know uh, we're sharing with your audience for a, a, I'm giving everyone 10% off if they're interested uh, mm -hmm. in that course. But, you know, certainly whether it's through my course or something else, educate yourself on the power of breath work. It is so effective. It is so powerful. It is so transformational. I, I just love getting the word out about it. That's amazing. Like, and also tell people about all the different services because you do a lot of different things to help people through breath work and, you know, and you help people reduce stress and you do a lot of things that are really beneficial to help people grow emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So tell people about a lot of the things you do and the services that you have for people. Yeah, absolutely. So I work directly with executives, entrepreneurs, higher level professionals that are interested in really making a transformation of their life. I look at it not just from the business aspect, but I look at it from their health, their 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 uh, relationships, their business, and their true wealth, because that is what true wealth is about, right? It, it's not yes. just building your kingdom. It's being able to enjoy it and appreciate it and keep it throughout your journey. 100%. So I work very directly with them one-on-one -on -one and in groups. And then I also offer breathworks uh, for both individuals and groups as well, uh, you know, it, could be coming into your company to assist the team through a difficult transition. It can be working with you directly or even working with couples. Um, my wife, Sandy, I know you had the privilege, you know, Sandy, yes. so it's so do you get to talk about it. So Sandy and I also work with couples. Uh, she she does a lot of relationship work and I, I come in and join in from time to time. And so that is absolutely, we've incorporated breath work into that as well. That's a really neat date night, by the way. Yeah. Is a, breathwork event for you and your partner to, to do that. So yeah. there are opportunities for breathwork courses and to work with me on breathwork. And then obviously, if you're looking to really make a major change in your life, the direct coaching is something I highly recommend. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And where can people find you? What, 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 where is your website? So my website is at breathe, B-R-E-A-T-H-E, breathe-with.me, breathe with me. 
And are you available on the social networks? If anyone wants to like follow you and see what you're up to and keep up with all the good things that you're doing, where can they find you on the social media? I am. That's going to be, and we'll have, I'll send you the link. So they'll be on the show notes, but that is uh, at John Hall coaching on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and John Thomas Hall on LinkedIn. Excellent. Oh my goodness. This has been amazing. I really want you back on the show. I, I love this because, you know, so many people, you know, react instead of really taking a deep breath and then doing these exercises the way you were explaining. And I'm sure there's more than one way of doing different types of breathing for different situations that, you know, if people didn't react and just, you know, and they can just take a, a first, maybe one deep breath just to slow it down. And then implement the things that you teach them, you know, so many great things could happen. You know, you could see people maybe not acting so violently or so hateful. You could see people actually having better relationships instead of just yelling at your spouse and get into in a fight or saying something that you didn't mean, but it just slipped out of your mouth or just be at being at work and getting so stressed out and maybe jumping at a coworker or a colleague that you didn't really want to, but you were just so stressed for the day. And we can go on and on and on about situations and scenarios, but if you learn how to do specific breathe work for certain situations, you can make your life better in all areas of your life. And it, and it seems that, you know, it's, you know, it's like you said, it's, it's a daily, it's, it's a daily process, just like everything. If you want to lose weight, it's not like eating one good day and then you just go back to your old ways. It's incorporated into your daily lifestyle. And I feel like when you incorporate good habits into your daily lifestyle, before you know it, you don't even realize you're doing it. It becomes just a part of you. It's a part of your lifestyle. And you don't even realize you, after a while, you don't even have to make the effort. It just, it gets implanted into your brain and implanted into your subconscious and you just react that way. And it really can improve your overall life a hundred percent. So I love what you're doing. I think you're doing a great thing for, you know, not just the CEOs and, and the, and the people who own businesses, but all these different techniques can help people, like you said, individually, and it can change people people's lives in so many ways. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and just share all this. This is great. And I hope you'll come back and I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Stacy. thank you so much. It's so wonderful to get to uh, chat with you today and share this with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thanks, Stacey.